next time on Club Ball.
paid to play lacrosse on the weekends, sometimes. So I train myself mentally, physically, and spontaneously. Yeah. <laughs> Next time on Club Ball. Next time on Club Ball.
Gaucho, 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 Okay. 
next time on Club Ball. next time on Club Ball. It was a young man who, you know, he wanted to make a lot of money, and so he went to this guru, right? And he told the guru, you know, I want to be on the same level you are. And so the guru said, if you want to be on the same level I'm on, I'll meet you tomorrow at the beach. So I train myself mentally, physically, and spontaneously. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Max Ritz here with uh, Brett Baldwin, who's the creative director for Adrenaline Apparel. We're at the Adrenaline offices in San Diego. Um, here to talk about the hats that we'll release as part of our spring summer collection. Brett, you wanna dive in? Yeah, first and foremost, the hat that I'm most excited about this season is definitely the Staycation hat. It's a new fit, new fabric, new hat for us. Um, it's really lightweight, super fun for summer. You can even play in it if you want. Using a lightweight nylon. This um, is this is basically the gray colorway that's going to be in our mainstream adrenaline movement line. And then we have a pretty exciting addition that's going to be part of our confidential line. It's going to be a little bit more exclusive, a little bit harder to get your hands on. Max can tell you a little bit more about it. Yeah, the Adrenaline Confidential program was built pretty much to reward some of our very best uh, partners and retailers and such. And uh, we do that by giving 
products like these uh, they have access to, whereas some of the wholesale stuff does very, very well, and you pull out like a, like a neon for uh, you know, a really great partner. So look for these in select retailers, look for these in all retailers. Um, this will be a fun line. I mean, as you can see, a lot of these colors and a lot of these styles are pretty undeniable right now. I mean, this is a, a, our take on a classic look. It's snap back. It's made by great manufacturers, so the fit's all there. And um, we're just stoked to have a line of hats that's ready to roll, and personally with the turp colors. So uh, we're jacked up. Thanks. Thank you. traditional hard mesh. Uh, the hard mesh that I buy is from Jimalax. You can get some at www.jimalax.com. It's my favorite, really great prices. And um, stretching out your mesh is one of the most important steps to string your mesh pocket if you don't properly stretch it out. When you string your pocket, it'll be shallow and lumpy and it won't work out as well as if you stretch it. So you want to do is start with the side that you're going to string at the top and just pull it and stretch it as wide as it possibly go. And you'll notice at first, uh, since it is hard mesh, it'll be pretty hard to stretch out and you're really gonna have to tug on it. And so just start from the top to the bottom, then go back, switch sides with the way you're pulling, and just grip it from the outside, just like this as tight as you can, and just stretch it all the way out. And you can get a little rough with it, you can pull it pretty hard. It's, it's built to withstand a lot of pressure and you can stretch it out as far as you can possibly stretch it and you can spend even a couple minutes doing this stretching out you don't have to stretch out the very bottom because that's not the uh, the part you're going to be stringing but the top you want to stretch out as far as it'll possibly go at least a couple with a couple times each way down just going back and forth from side to side and make sure you're pulling it evenly so go down with your hands uh, do the same spot at once and pull it down so when you're done you'll notice it'll start to curl a little bit but it'll look like that and you can see how stretched out all the diamonds are and how wide it is compared to where you started. And this is just gonna help the pocket form deep right away. If you don't stretch, it'll be very shallow. And one thing you wanna make sure you do is see how these holes on the side are kind of flat. You wanna make sure you take those and pull them out like that and loosen them. because that's really gonna help uh, them lay correctly on the string when you go to string the sidewall. Um, one thing a lot of people like to do when they stretch the mesh and before they go to string their head is soak it in hot water. Uh, it's something I do uh, sometimes when I string a head if I have a piece of mesh that's particularly hard. And so when you do that, all you want to do is just take hot water and just uh, run it, run the piece of mesh under the sink and get it all, the whole thing uh, soaked in the hot water. And then take a towel and just pat it off so it's just damp. And make sure while it's still damp, you string it, uh, string it up while it's still wet, get it all finished. And some people even like to take a ball and a butter knife and put a ball in after it's strung. Um, another thing that people like to do is either before they string it or after they string it, they like to take uh, either conditioner or lotion and just rub it on the inside where the pocket's going to be or all over and then stretch it. And that's going to make it considerably softer. But personally, uh, I like to just string it when it's just regular hard, stretch it out just like this. And if you want to make it a little bit softer for string, you can kind of crumple it up a little bit, stretch it back out, you know grind it up a little bit and that's going to break down uh, the coating even more. So you can see this piece is much more flexible than I started and fully stretched out and ready to string. And so that's all you have to do to prepare your mesh to be strung. Um, just real quickly, I make a mesh called East Coast Mesh. It's become very popular. Anyone that's seen my channel already knows about it. And there's over a thousand people all over the world that use it. And so it's a wax coated mesh that's waterproof and you can see how easily it stretches and stays stretched. So as soon as you
uh, back to the action procedure call on the on the face off going against the slugs ball uh, ball to the Titans setting up their uh, setting up their offense and again it's four to three in favor of, of Fullerton hey we take a quick second here to uh, apologize to some of our viewers first half had some uh, technical difficulties with the audio but I hope you enjoyed the game uh, we're here at four to three Cal State Fullerton at Cal State Fullerton Santa Cruz Slugs coming down from beautiful Santa Cruz, California. Big stop, shot from Costanza, and a goal. And that one's off the pipe and in, and I mean, it's it's a really great turn. I mean, on a, on a dime there to push the uh, push the lead to two. Oh, a minute and three seconds into the uh, into the second half. I mean, that's that's yeah. a big momentum shifter. And that's a tough one for them to give up. I mean, as we talked about earlier in the sec in the first half, uh, Santa Cruz has to score early, and uh, that that goes just as much for the second half. I mean, whoever comes out the hottest in the first five minutes of the, of the third quarter uh, really has the edge. And, and Santa Cruz, with the low numbers today, needs to really capitalize on this momentum opportunity. If they can get a couple goals in here, tie the game up, I think I think they're going to be in good shape. And, I mean, that's exactly what happened last week. I mean, I mentioned, I mentioned this game before, and uh, I'll probably do it again, but against the uh, against Concordia, Fullerton uh, couldn't, couldn't stop them early in the third quarter. And uh, they, they went on to score double-digit goals in the second half. I mean, really, uh, really impressive offensive output from Concordia last week. I think the key here for Santa Cruz is to possess the ball. I mean, they, they haven't had too much time on possession, and they, they've had some good goals. I mean, they're, they're still very much in this game. It's a two-goal game. I think they need to utilize some of their uh, big offensive powers. I mean, that, that's a great rip from Redmond right there. Uh, you know, another second-year player who was a, a converted football player. They got it. They got to utilize their, their best players. And right here, Masaka, he's he's having some trouble right there. I think if they can swing it around, we can see some of that ball movement that we saw in the first half. Uh, they're going to be in good shape. They got to possess the ball. They're low on numbers, and they have to save save themselves. And and they have to they have to stop uh, any any uh, unforced errors. I mean, they, they can't afford to to lose the ball uh, at, at all in, uh, in in an unforced way. I mean, if you, if you get you get a big check like that. Um, coming from uh, Chris Wheeler, then it, 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 it happens, but uh, you can't be throwing the ball away. We saw some in the first half from both both sides. Great job of getting the ball back there. And Burns uh, in great position to uh, to stop that shot. No problem for him. He's hugging the post. Yeah, and if, if, if Jaffe wants to take that shot, he's got to take two or three more steps up to 7-7, seven and seven, turn around and shoot for the far pipe. Here's uh, Burns walking the uh, walking the ball. Has 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 the lion. The lion runs right into the triple, and then cuts right through, and he's in. Moves across, and there's a great stick by Layman, able to get his get his hands on that one. I mean, he's he's been playing great. I mean, he's really been uh, the uh, the star on on defense for the Slugs so far tonight. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, Slug's a young team. He's a sophomore, and he's uh, one of the leaders on this team. Definitely been playing uh, lights out. He's been playing Cameron Cole. I think he's been playing it, playing him very well. And there's a great shot by, by Redmond. I mean, really, uh, really solid effort there. You see him calling for the ball early. He recognizes, uh, recognizes he's going to have a good opportunity to take a shot there, and that one just a little bit off the mark. And there's Kalman. Up to Michael, and I mean, Michael, really, really impressive. And that's a great heads-up play by Alamijo, <laughs> with the discipline to, to, to wait for, uh, for for line to get off the field, and then run straight on on to get that ball. And I think those are the plays Santa Cruz just can't have if they want to win this game. They, they just cannot throw the ball away like that. They can't give Fullerton more opportunities like that. And that, that's a great save right there, but they just can't give them opportunities. And a great slide. And that's a great look up to Michael. And Michael has time to pick this up. Got to use two hands. I mean, the coach coaches hate to see that. Here comes Olnick inside. And that's, and that's just a great hustle play on the back end. To uh, to get that ball by by Alamijo on the, on, on the back end, Ol Olnick just had a, had a great uh, great dodge there and couldn't quite uh, get it. Finally, the ball's picked up by Cowman. <laughs> ball goes right to Olnick. Definitely been impressed with Santa Cruz uh, ground ball ability tonight. I mean, it, they they play on grass as well, so I think they're probably pretty used to this. 
And that is a real ambitious pass cross field to Mis Misaka with a nice hitch and, uh, you know, gets the shot off, but just a little late, and, and he gets a check right there. If he can unleash that one quicker right around the defender, that might be a different story. Yeah, and, and that pass is, is it, to go complete across the field pass there is pretty, uh, pretty lucky that one even snuck through. And opting to uh, shut Redmond off. Is, are, are the Titans using uh, Almijo? Interesting, uh, interesting call there. There's Olnick. Got to land in a great check by Ray. And another uh, attempt at a one-handed pickup there from Misaka, and that's just not going to fly here in the, in, the, in the fourth quarter if the Slugs want to possess the ball. Yeah. And I know, I know with uh, Samir Chaudhry here, I mean, be, being a coach, I mean, that's just, that must just really grind your gears. Yeah, and I mean, the, the fact of the matter is here that Santa Cruz has a huge opportunity to, to beat a top 15 team in the nation. Uh, you know, come, unranked Santa Cruz comes down and, and plays Fullerton at Fullerton. And, uh, they, hang stuff in the first yeah, half. Yeah, hang stuff in the first half. And, and right now, they can't lose their heads. They can't, they can't start doing un, unfundamental things. They can't be picking up ground balls with one hand. they got to just stick to their roots, stick to their fundamentals. They're low on numbers, but they can possess the ball. We saw it in the first half. They have good ball carriers, good ball handlers, and good shooters. So if they can exploit those strengths and limit their weaknesses, I mean, I think that's what every team wants to do. But if they can do it tonight, it, it's a different story. Absolutely. Here's uh, Costanzo going uh, going up top. He has the has the shorty. And definitely keep the uh, keep the comments, questions, anything you got uh, got coming. We love we love to hear about it. And there's a great dodge, able to move it. Can't quite find Leoy, who, who pops up on the uh, on the crease, and there's Lamo with another ground ball. I mean, he's just been a ground ball machine everywhere, and that's a great play. Fires it into uh, fires it into the back of the goal. She able to get it, and I mean, just just the way that he's playing. Uh, I mean, he's so smart and 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 talented. Besides, I mean, he's going to be a really good player in the next couple of years. And, and DC Lee coming in with a comment here saying, you know, so many unforced errors. Come on, slugs. And uh, we agree with you over here. That, that's, that's it's not my job to disagree. Yeah. I mean, we, I think let's see what they can do here on this possession. Um, I think they got to just swing it around, find their matchups, go hard against them and shoot edges. If they shoot edges, they can chase the ball and get more possessions. Absolutely. I mean, and, and they have to make sure that they are uh, – they're doing a good job of backing up too. I mean, because that's that that goes into that that unforced error category if you, if you don't have backup on your shots. Here's the uh, skip pass to Redmond. This is ball able to uh, able to get back to it, and, th and then there's two blue shirts running to that ball. I mean, that's something that they they're definitely going to need to rely on is is hustle and and numbers. Jaffe hasn't been a hasn't been a huge factor so far uh, so far today, but uh, de definitely you can tell that he's a, he's a talented player. Yeah, Jaffe having some trouble this week. Pulled his oblique in practice, and uh, you know he's down here. He's working hard trying trying to get back to 100. percent We talked to him before the game, and he's he said he's having trouble shooting the ball, and I think that's obviously something that's that's going to affect his play as as a big time scorer. And there's a huge missed opportunity for uh, for the Titans. I mean, there's there's Leoy coming in looking for uh, looking for Cameron Cole wide open on the crease, and with 6:31 to go, I mean that's an opportunity for them to extend their lead to three and uh, really start putting uh, putting the screws in. Yeah, and, and uh, it's I, uh, both sides of the ball. I mean, on four stairs. I mean, this 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 doesn't look like the same team that pretty much dismantled a very good Grand Canyon team. And Santa Cruz. Uh clearing the ball here and they, they got some of their uh, starting defenders missing actually it's uh finals time up in up in santa cruz and and a lot of kids couldn't make the trip but it, i think they're, they're doing an all right job with what they have a, a nice hit by jaffe and it's some good intensity out of uh out of the uh out of the midfielder from el toro 
And there's, and there's uh, Chris Cole able to pick up the GB as, as Olnick, and you, and you can tell that he is just gassed. And uh, opting to, to slow it down a little bit is Alamijo. And I think both teams need this a little bit right now. I mean, it's, a, it's been a back-and-forth game. Cameron Cole, big rip, top corner. You, I mean, if, if you Lord, if you want to play against Cameron Cole, you got to shut him off. You you can't play him straight up. I mean, there's there's, he's too good. He's too good. A, every team that we've seen go up against him can't stop him. I mean, Concordia held him to one, but it, it, from what it, the looks of it, he was having a little bit of an off day. When he's on, he's on. I mean, we saw him shooting before the game. He was hitting top corner after top corner. Yeah, and, and you he just he wants to prove. Effortless. Yeah, he wants to prove that he can play at that D one level and. I, He'll hit that top corner I'm every not, single I'm time. Argue, I'm not going to argue with you, him. You give him an open shot. And that's a 6 to 3, and there's 5.22 to go. And that one goes right into Wins. Sorry, Wheeler, Sean Wheeler stick. And uh, finds Alamijo. And there's a 5 five twelve to go, and it's 6 to 3 in favor of. Uh, favor of Fullerton and Fullerton definitely you can definitely see their confidence growing a little bit here there's a little 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 bit more pep in their step and uh, and, and and moving well here's uh, Atkinson working on Redmond and, I mean I can't I can't imagine what it, well I mean I guess I can but uh, for some of these kids some of these kids playing uh, complete game basically is a uh, it's tough I mean, we. Uh, I, I know when uh, when I played, uh, we had we we couldn't go full field. We had about 17 guys um, at Chapman, and it was uh, it was a battle. And you see some of those guys out there playing complete games, and it is not easy, even for the guys who are the fittest of the fit. And here's a uh, camera with a shorty, and you have to think they're going to go with a with go with a quick quick slide here. Yeah, I mean, you heard the Santa Cruz coaches calling a switch there, trying to get Davis Lehman back onto uh, Cameron Cole, and it just just wasn't something that could happen. They, they're going to have to watch the, the top of, of the box right now. I mean, they got a they got a man wide open up there, and Santa Cruz has got to be careful that that pass doesn't come through. That's a great move across, able to find Chris Cole, and Chris Cole can't make anything happen. The ball's out, and there's Michael again using those wheels. I mean, he's gonna he's gonna get there. I mean. That's impressive. Takes a massive hit. Another big hit. A couple of big hits over there. And, the, and they're just all over the place. I mean, these these players are, are, are giving it everything they've got out there. Hey, I, I'll tell you one thing. I mean, I, as, a, as a Santa Cruz alumni, I know these two teams don't like each other. Uh, I know we used to have a lot of heated battles uh, back when I was playing, and it looks like the same thing over here. I mean, these teams definitely don't like each other, and, and it's showing right now. And, and after something like that, I mean, the rest of this game is going to get real intense. Exactly. And, and, and you know, I mean, it's, the Slugs have won three or four. So, I mean, it's definitely uh, something that uh, is, is in the back of the mind of some of these some of these older older Fullerton guys. I mean, they won the last one, but... Uh, it's a tight one. Yeah. Tight one up in Santa Cruz. Uh, Mike Ansel, actually, a coach here at, at Fullerton, had ten goals in that game uh pretty unbelievable i think it was something that uh coaching staff at santa cruz uh had to had to go back to the tape and take a look at say hey wh who was guarding that guy because he uh he had 10 goals and and uh, it was goals. a it was a 13 to 11 victory for cal state fullerton so i mean uh always been been one extraordinary player on fullerton i mean ansel was a great player and now now we got Cameron Cole. Yeah, we got Cameron Cole. I mean, Chris Cole is no slouch either. I mean, he's, no, absolutely not. He's, he's, he's a great player. player. Absolutely great player. Yeah, I mean, they're they've, they've got great players all over the field, but I mean, he's a real superstar in in uh, in Cameron Cole. So we got a question here from Batman Laxes, and uh, he's asking why. That's also based on fact. Yeah, that is based on fact. Uh, he's asking why we aren't streaming the CU CSU game in Mile High Stadium. Chris, you want to take that one? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's. Uh, we thought this one would be a more competitive game, and we figured we'd be able to get uh, more viewers. It's such a uh, nice night here in Fullerton. Yeah, absolutely. And tomorrow we're actually doing the Chapman Santa Barbara game for our rivalry week. If you guys want us to get out to uh, the CU CSU game next year, make sure to put in your request early. And, and if we have high enough demand, you know, we'll we'll try and make it happen. But uh, tomorrow we got Chapman taking on Santa Barbara for our SLC rivalry. Uh, it's a big rivalry, and Chris, you know, as an alumni of, of Chapman, what do you think about that game tomorrow? Uh, you know, it's 
it's it's a huge game because it's uh, the the huge playoff implications not only for the SLC tournament for the national championship. Whoever wins that game is going to get the number one seed in the north, and they're going to get a bye from the first round. And whoever whoever loses that game is going to get a home game next week, and will have to play uh, one of the, the the third seed from the uh, from the other division. But getting an extra week off to get your players healed and to uh, to go over some more some more stuff is is huge. I I, I have to think that it's it's tough to bet against Chapman. Uh, Chapman right now with the way they're playing. I mean, they, they completely dismantled LMU last week and uh, look to be firing on all cylinders. So I I, I, I have to say I'm going uh, get, get, to have to think that Chapman's going to come away with that one. And Costanzo draws a shorty here in, in Zach Michael, and uh, I think he's going to be wanting to drive. I, I can see him going right to left here and, and looking for a, a shot on the run. And uh, Jaffe comes in at the midfield. Looks like they've switched him from the attack position to the midfield position. I think a good move. Another one from Cameron Cole. And, again, a a as we said before, if you want to play with Cameron Cole, you have to shut him off. Yeah. Y you have no option. And, and especially, especially in a situation like this, I mean, if you, if you have the luxury of having, you know, two or three, you know, real number one guys uh, on, on defense, then, I mean, you, you can play him straight up and play him hard and, and maybe get away with it. But, I mean, it's, you know, layman has been everywhere all, uh, all game. And that's... That's just a spectacular shot, and and, and I mean you, you can tell that uh, Layman's uh, Layman's legs are going a little bit, because I mean that, that's that's a play that he he was making earlier in the game, able to stay with uh, stay with Cameron Cole as he goes through that. And Santa Cruz comes up with the, with the face off, and I think you know again it's still a close game. They they have to keep their composure through this quarter, and they have to put a ball the ball in the back of the net, and, and that's not going to help. Turnovers are not going to help them. Yeah, and it's it looks like the uh, the stick came across and got got Masaka's stick a little bit, but got a lot of his face, and it, fortunate not to get a penalty there for uh, for Fullerton. Again, there's two minutes and 35 seconds to go in the third quarter, and uh, Fullerton on top, seven to three. Great cross field pass. Finds Forrest. One comes across, has Lion. Liner Costanzo. And really moving the ball quickly now. And just misses. He's a wheeler. Paid the price. Took a pretty pretty big hit on that one. Cameron Cole starting with it. He's by thought about the uh, the turnaround jump shot there. And uh, off to, to look for Wheeler. Can't quite find him. And she comes up with it. They're just on a rope. Jaffe, Jaffe. Using his athleticism right now. Looks like he's uh, he's he's looking to take control of this game. And great checks from Morris in there. I mean, he's a real solid defender. But je definitely uh, definitely seeing a little bit of... Uh, of, of, of Jaffe. I mean, I, I, I've had those uh, abdominal strains, and they are no joke. I mean, they're they're extremely painful, and in, in every 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 movement that you have, I mean, that's that's when you really realize how much uh, your core plays into everything you're doing. And Sa Santa Cruz right now needs to needs to get out wide into their their normal offensive set. It looks like they're in a, just a one four. There's there's not even anybody at X right now, and, and they have to they have to get into that normal set. And, and solid defense there, coming from uh, Chris Wheeler, able to uh, play great defense and probably got a uh, got a play on there. Morgan able to pick it up, and Morgan's got some got some wheels. Yeah, Morgan's a very talented player. We've seen him all season. He he's been you know a vacuum on those ground balls. He plays with serious intensity, and he's he's definitely a leader on this team. Got got fo got 40 seconds left in this quarter. Fullerton with the ball. We're, we're, we'll see them take a, a big shot with a defender right here. And there's Ray with a great stick in the BTB. Oh, oh, man. That would have been sick. I mean, that's <laughs> that's ambitious right there. But, you know, at that point, he, he had somebody all over him uh, on the front side. I mean, you might as well throw it behind your back, right? Yeah, I mean, it, it improved his angle. I, I mean, it's probably the right shot in that, in that situation. It's just getting yourself in that situation when your pull is not easy. Here we go, last 15 seconds here. Looks like they're, they're opting to uh, lock everything off. Seven seconds. 
with Cameron and Chris Cole being locked up. They're side to Costanzo. Costanzo just rips the corner two and, and seconds that's, ago. That's a double pick play that we've seen uh, Cal State Fullerton, Cal State Fullerton uh, do a, a million times this year. I mean, they, they used to run it for Cameron Cole, and I think they saw Santa Cruz is playing Cameron Cole and Chris Cole real tight. So what, what they need to do is use their, their other powers. You know, they have to use Costanzo off the double pick or, or uh, you know, Lions or, or one of their other middies off that double pick because because Cameron Cole is, is being played real tight. Yeah, and, and that's a real that's a real backbreaker if you're uh, if you're Santa Cruz giving giving up a goal with with two seconds to go in this uh, in this quarter and uh, putting them up by five. I mean they're largest lead of the game at eight to three, and uh, that's going to do it here for three quarters. So stay tuned to the fourth quarter and uh, we'll be right back. Next time on Club Ball. here and just about ready to uh, get the fourth quarter underway here and it's uh, eight to three in favor of the home Titans really had a uh, an explosive quarter scoring four goals uh, and shutting out the slugs uh, really kind of blowing the doors off this game yeah, I mean you can you can see it the uh, in the in, in the slugs really uh, losing their uh, their 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 legs here they, they all look tired, but definitely, definitely holding their own in the first half. Now, see if they can. I mean, stranger things have happened. Absolutely, I mean, in the sport of lacrosse, five goals is not not that big of a a deficit. And if they can get it together and, and get the right shots on and, and put them on cage and get them in the back of the net, they're going to be all right. And that's a great check and an even better play, able to flip that to Redmond. Redmond uh, wisely opts to slow it down here a little bit to find Michael. Jaffe checks in here from the midfield. I think they're definitely going to want to want to mark up on him as soon as as soon as uh, they see him. Yeah, and that's 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 actually a recommendation that we made after a uh, after a comment uh, one of your comments. So uh, definitely keep those yeah. coming, and we'll we'll see what we can do. Calman brings the ball back in from X. And there's a great save. I mean, just great, great positioning uh, there from Burns. I mean, he never saw that one. Hits him, hits him in the leg. Yeah. But uh, he's in the right place. I mean, it's a good connection for Santa Cruz. That's a, that's that's got to be a push in the back there. And Cameron Cole is just making it look easy right now. I, I mean, 
that's that's a that's three I think for him maybe four four I think that's four for him but I, I mean he it doesn't even look like he's trying very hard honestly I mean there's we, we've said it a million times Cameron Cole is is, is a talented player and it's, it's tough to play him straight up in this league it's tough to play him straight up he's a real talented player but you know on the other side of the field it's not all bad there for Santa Cruz because you see David Kalman feed David Masaka that's a, a freshman to a sophomore uh, and it's a good connection it's a connection that they'll have for the next couple of years and and hopefully they can get some more players on the squad and and uh, you know be able to compete because because you see it in the first half it's it's a tie game after the first quarter and Talented yeah. team, and it's, and it's a one-goal game going into the going into the half. And there you have it. Going to get the uh, another look at the the man-up unit from uh, from Santa Cruz. It's going to be a push with possession, going against Sean Wheeler, one of the three Wheelers on the uh, on the Titan squad. Looks like Olnick's going to uh, going to start with the ball. Here with 13:46 to go in the game. And please keep the uh, comments, questions, anything you got uh, got going. We'd we'd love to uh, we'd love to hear what you uh, what you think. About Fifteen seconds left in this uh, left in this penalty. Let's see if the slugs can get a uh, get a shot off here. Here comes Redmond, looking back, and then can't find uh, Saka there. They have to get those passes up. I mean, they got a man up opportunity there, and they, they have to get the passes up. But yeah, and it's uh, four seconds left in this uh, this penalty here. Thirteen nineteen to go in the game. Fullerton on top, nine to three. Scored uh, scored five straight goals. Uh, really really impressive. Here's Valentine doing it himself, getting uh, getting across. Had, had a lane to the goal there if uh, if you wanted to take it. Ops to pull it out. It's going to be uh, offsides, and that's a great play by Jack, be able to get that uh, with, uh, with one hand. There's Misaka. Saka looks, looks like a shot. Oh, There's a great, great save, save, by, save Burns. by Burns. And the ball's I mean, going to stay with uh, stay with the slugs on a push going against Fullerton. I mean, that's great movement by Santa Cruz right there, and, and an even better save by Burns. I mean, that's impressive right on the doorstep uh, to be able to make that save right there. Yeah, and I mean, he, he takes that step that step forward and just takes up a bunch of space. And I mean, he's been in great position all night. I mean, he, he's, he's a good goalie. Yeah, and and he's got great positioning. So I mean, it's uh, really really makes a difference when you have a kid who can make stops like that. Here's Michael here with 12:24 to go in the game. And that's not the shot that Santa Cruz needs to take. I mean, you see Zach Olenek uh, open up top, I and mean, that's the movement that you want to see. Cameron Cole with a great ground ball right there. I mean, doing doing it all. And there's great there's great great defensive play and even I, I, great great play. Here, uh, Santa Cruz bring the ball in. It's up to uh, Nap Halleck. Able to get it to Redmond. Redmond's through. Takes the shot, takes a big hit. Mishasaka moves to Olnick. And back up to Redmond. And there's a shot, another great save. It burns. I mean, any anytime, anytime they're getting good looks, uh, the slugs, I mean, Burns he's, is there, there to sh yeah. slam the door. He's there to shut the door, exactly. Every time they they have a good look, I mean, they had a wide open, fast break, he's there to shut the door. And, and I think some of those plays go to the, the experience of Fullerton to be playing in these big games. Great movement there. And there's a great check to keep, uh, keep the shot from coming off there. 
and again, I think I think a lot of these plays you got to chalk up to experience. I mean, Fullerton has experience playing in huge games. And that's that's a, there's a goal there, right? Yeah. It, it looks was, like they may have flipped that one back into their own goal. No, it was uh, it was actually uh, Alamijo who picked it up and popped it in uh, right off the ground. And that, and that pushes the score to ten to three here with uh, eleven minutes to go in the game. Really, uh, really pouring it on now are uh, are the Titans. Scoring, uh, I want to say seven unanswered. Yeah, seven unanswered. I mean, Santa, uh, Santa Cruz scored three in the first half, and they haven't scored yet in the second half. And and that's huge. Is that in that uh, third quarter, the first five minutes of that third quarter, they have to score. I mean, yeah. I mean, if they if they want to play against a ranked opponent, they have to score. And then the second thing is they have to control Cameron Cole. Yeah. I mean, which, which in theory, is. In theory sounds easy, but it's not very easy. Even if yeah. you if you if you're planning to shut him off, it's still hard. Yeah, uh, he, he's such a talent, and him and him and his brother Chris Cole are both so talented that it's it's tough to control those brothers. And and then you know if you do control them, Fullerton still has more power. Yes, Costanzo you know, is, shows, is, shows that he can score. Alamijo just scored a goal. I, I mean, they, they they've got guys who can score. That's that's not a, not a problem for them. I think that yeah, it's it's depth and experience on the Fullerton sideline, and a lack of depth and a lack of experience on on the Santa Cruz sideline. I mean, we got uh, a lot of young players on that on that sideline, a lot of players who haven't played in these big time games. So, you know, hopefully the Slugs can progress over over the season and uh, do well in their conference, and then you know, hopefully in the, the years to come, with all this young talent, they can uh, put something together. But uh, Fullerton definitely uh, impressive this season. Had a tough loss last year last uh, week against Concordia. But it's going to be interesting to see how they do against Long Beach and what seating they get going into the tournament, the yeah. SLC tournament. And I think I think they have to beat Long Beach to qualify for the tournament. They do. Yeah. So I mean, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> they, they have to. Not win. only the seed, yeah, I mean, they, they they have to win that game. Yeah. I mean, and that's that's why that that Concordia loss was so big. I mean, if they would have won that game or even kept it a little closer, they would have had the opportunity to. Uh, Get a, get a much closer look at that that number two seed, or, or even a one seed because it's on goal differential. And Paul Morgan again. I mean, clearing machine. He's one of those long poles who just is so talented in this league, and that that's something that's huge. You need those talented long poles who can clear the ball. You can't clear the ball, you can't you can't possess the ball. Yeah, and, that, and that's one thing made uh, made Michigan so good when they when they were playing. They went that that ten man ten man ride, and they had so many good uh, good athletes that. Teams had trouble uh, had trouble beating it, and that I know <laughs> for a fact that that was a a lot of the reason why they uh, they beat Chapman in those back-to-back -back national championships is uh, they couldn't couldn't figure out the couldn't figure out the ten-man ride. Great and, save right there by uh, Rayhan Sheik. Here comes Michael, great looking for Jaffe, and uh, again you can see you can see it in the legs. I mean that's that's a ground ball that he that he gets. Most of the time, it was a great look across, and even better goal. And that's Carroll scores just a just a gem. That's a great fast break goal for Fullerton. I mean, it, 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 his teammates are fired up. He's a player who doesn't normally score, and uh, it's a big goal for for the momentum of, the, of Fullerton, who has all the momentum right now in the second half. I mean, it's yeah. been it's been all Fullerton, all, all half. Yeah, I mean, eight in a row is eight in a row any way you, any way you slice it. And uh, really, uh, really looking pretty impressive here in the second half. I mean, that's a great shot. I mean, it's off. It's uh, stick side off the hip. I mean, that's a, that's a tough set, set save to make. And so I, you, can't, you can't really fault uh, Cheek on that one on the fast break. And he's, he's been playing great. And especially for a kid who, who just started playing goalie this, this season, I mean, the, the stuff that he's been able to do is pretty impressive. I, I mean, I know he stuffed Cameron Cole early in the game, and um, I mean, definitely when you're when you're a first year player like that, it's you, you let a couple goals in, and it's it's tough not to get a little bit down on yourself. And Santa Cruz has to, you know, win faceoffs here. They have to control the ball. I, I don't think they've seen much of the ball in this quarter, and with nine minutes left, uh, they're going to want to put some in the back of the net. And they have to control the faceoff X. They got to control possession uh, so that they can put put a couple in. And there's Cameron Cole with the shot from shot from deep, and there's a great great hustle play from Sheik. I mean, there's there's no give in these kids, and and that's something that's important. I mean, that's something you can look for to build on in the future. I mean, you you, you get guys and they're down down eight goals, they haven't scored yet in the second half. It's you know just about halfway through the uh, through the fourth quarter, and, and they're out there you know running as hard as they can. 
And that's, that's a great overhead check from uh, from Cameron Cole. I, do, doing it on both ends. Yeah, he, he's a talented player. And again, you know, Santa Cruz has to work harder on the clear. Their middies have to work harder. Their attackmen have to work harder. They just have to work harder on the clear. The clear is is something that is just so important. I mean, be, being a former player and, as well as coach, you just know that possession time is everything. And if you can't clear it, you can't possess the ball. And I think, you know, going back to what you said, some of these some of these older guys like, uh, like Sheik, who's, who's been on the team for four years, know about... Uh, the former success of Santa Cruz, you know, f four or five years ago when they were in the national tournament in Dallas, Texas. Nice save. Right That's there. a great save. I mean, track that ball the whole way, and and just over uh, overthrows his man there, looking for looking for Morris. And I mean, that's a. Uh, you know, you, you you pretty much erase a, a great play when you uh, when you throw the ball away like that. But uh, great save nonetheless but really have to do a better job of protecting the ball right now. Here's Lyon. They're with 8.25 to go in the game. And there's great defense. And Morris, uh, a San Diego product from Coronado High School, so, uh, another team that we saw this year. There's a big-time rip from Atkinson. And that one just off the mark. Is the line going to bring the ball in? Here he gets it to uh, Cameron Cole. Back to the line who has the shorty. Looking to feed inside, looking for Chris Cole. That one goes right to Joe Wheeler. Wheeler to Cameron Cole. And they're 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 throwing everything they got at him. I mean, he gets he gets inside, and there's four or five. It, literally everybody steps up, and uh, I mean, what the, what what can you even say about that? It's it is it looks so easy. <laughs> I, I I know it's not. <laughs> yeah. uh, it looks really great. I mean, Cameron Cole's a fluid fluid player, and and. He can score. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's all I can say. I mean, we've said it a million times this broadcast. Cameron Cole is such a talented player. I mean, is, is it possible that he could be the player of the game? Uh, I mean, I haven't counted all the votes yet, but uh, <laughs> it would be it would be hard not to not to give him that for the third time. And there's Morrison coming up with the GB, showing his wheels. Moves it to uh, Chris Cole here. Seven minutes to go in the game. Here, Fullerton on top, 12 to three, and uh, not really showing any time, any any signs of, uh, of slowing up right now. Look inside, and and there's another one. That one coming from Siegler uh, from uh, from Chris Cole, working from X. And uh, I mean, just right right on the doorstep. I mean, you the, these guys are tired. Yeah, Santa Cruz is Santa Cruz is tired. I mean, they're, they're throwing everything they got right now, and I, I think they they just don't have the kind of wheels. I, they don't have the legs. Yeah, and you see, even with uh, with Morris taking a run with this pole. I mean, you've seen you've seen just about everybody on the sideline take a uh, take a run with yeah. a pole, Absolutely. and and that's and that says something. And I mean, when you've got. Uh, Everyone, literally everyone on the sideline, taking uh, taking wing runs with the pole. I mean, you are you are really hurting for numbers. And Jaffe with a nice pickup, and he's he runs. Oh, they call Ward on that, but I, I don't like that. I, I don't call like at that call. All. Yeah, I don't know about that call. I thought Jaffe uh, used some good strength right there, ran through Alamijo. Yeah, and I mean, if you're if you're running. Full full strength, and and you drop a shoulder into someone who's standing flat-footed, they're gonna fall down. <laughs> I mean, there's there's no way, you, short of a stiff arm, I don't see how you could possibly call a ward there. Moves it up to uh, Cameron Cole. Here it's uh, six minutes to go. Moves it to. Uh, Alamijo, a great save by uh, by Sheik there. Here, 5:45. 
in a 10 goal lead for the Titans at 13 to three. And they're trying to, uh, still trying to shut off Chris Cole, able to get in there with a pick. Yeah, and I think more importantly what is uh, playing his brother Cameron. I mean, Chris Cole's a great facilitator. Yeah. But, I mean, you saw Cameron's ability to dodge one-on-one -on -one tonight. That's yeah. something that I, I think we've usually seen him catch and shoot. But tonight we saw his ability to dodge, and, and it was just you know, unstoppable. Again, yeah. just another thing that he can do that, that people can't stop. Yeah, and that's that inverted set. You know, it's like he, he, get, he comes from up top and uh, is able to get it. And there's a great lift. And then he gets gets the GB and runs it runs into uh, runs into Atkinson. But I, I mean, what do you? <laughs> comes up with the ball. I, he's everywhere. So look inside, and that's going to be a uh, pass going out of bounds. A little bit of an ambitious pass inside there to Carver. A little bit of a hospital pass there. Jaffe yeah. was there uh, <laughs> lining him up, lining him up a little bit. Jaffe's a former football player, uh, played over at El Toro High School. Yeah, and he's uh, he's shown that he's not afraid of contact. Nice swim to get by uh, Chris Cole. Draws the triple, moves the ball up, able to find McGorman. Nice handle by Zach Olenek. <laughs> yeah, and it's just, it's just the one the one-handed little, uh, little left lefty uh, lefty grab there. Interesting, uh, interesting grab. Four minutes and, and ten seconds left in the game here. And Zach Michael checks in on, on defense. Jaffe, Jaffe back to the sideline here, I think. He's Looks like uh, Fortin's uh, moved to their, their backup goalie. This is Justin uh, Cavalier. Here comes Michael. This is Redmond. And up to uh, Nap Halleck. Olnick looking to drive. Takes the shot. And there's a save for uh, Kapler, his first of the game. Zach Michael trying to get in there with that poke check. And knocks the stick out. Really, I don't know how he's not getting a hold there with the re reaching across the body. Might be getting the benefit of the doubt. Uh, because of the score, and that's that's. I mean, that's got to be a, a flag there. I, I that's blatant disregard for uh, for player safety there from Morrison. I, you'd, you'd have to think that. Uh, I mean, he re reach, reaches across his uh, his neck with a stick and then throws him to the ground. I'm surprised he didn't get an unnecessary roughness uh, call there. You know, the trainer's out to uh, out to take a look. And Michael's just not somebody that uh, Santa Cruz can, can afford to lose this weekend. They got Concordia tomorrow and UCSD on Sunday, and, and, and Michael is just, uh, you know, a workhorse. A workhorse and, and one of 13 players or 14 players that Santa Cruz has on this trip. So they, they, need, they need everybody they, they can have. Yeah, he's probably, you know, took one, took one in the throat and maybe got the air knocked out of him. But... Uh, <laughs> Either way, we hope he's okay. I mean, never, never like to see anybody get injured. And definitely someone that they can't afford to lose. Really a promising young player. And just a reminder that uh, everything you see here tonight is through uh, the eye of TVX Video, the official video provider of the Lacrosse Network. And that's TVX Video Services. And uh, looks like he's okay, uh, able to walk off under his own power. Definitely something you're uh, happy to see. And here with just over three minutes to go, so Fullerton still holding uh, holding strong with 10 goal lead, uh, having shut out the uh, the Slugs so far uh, here in the second half. And even though this one's a little bit out of reach, I mean you kind of like to see uh, the Slugs get out there and uh, and score one. You know, really uh, take a, take take whatever momentum they can from this game uh, into their next game against Concordia. And there's great clear, able to get it to Masaka. There's Olnick, able to uh, get his own GB there. 2:45 to go. Moves it to Redmond.
Ballantyne working on Redmond. Moves it to his brother. Back to Misaka. And down to Redmond. And definitely taking their time on offense, not trying to force it. I mean, there's uh, there's no 10-pointers in lacrosse, so, I mean, this is an opportunity for them to continue running their offense. Gets in the back. Ray with a great GB. Great GB right there. I mean, yeah. uh, Practically an Indian pickup. <laughs> yeah, that's back here. Two minutes left in the game, so we're going to see Fullerton have to keep it in the box here. There's going to be a uh, flag down going against uh, going against the Slugs. I didn't see exactly what happened there. I... It's going to be uh, unnecessary uh, roughness going against uh, Redmond. Uh, hit to the helmet. I, I didn't see what. I, I mean, he kind of looked like he lost his footing from where from where we are. I mean, it's obviously all the way across the field, but uh, came in uh, came in a little high. And that. And that's a two-minute non-releasable penalty. Uh, that's going to be for the rest. Of, Santa Cruz is going to be man down for the rest of this game. And that's that's definitely not what Santa Cruz needed to end, end this game. And Fulton's going to have to uh, keep this in the box. Well, it's going to be uh, out of bounds on a uh, errant pass there. Back to the slugs with a 135 to go. Got a question, a little late on responding to this one, but asking if we're streaming the UCSC Concordia game tomorrow. Uh, we are not. We're actually going to be streaming uh, Chapman and Santa Barbara. Big, big D1 matchup, uh, some SLC championship implications, as well as some national uh, championship implications. I mean, those are two top, top teams. Yeah, and those are uh, those are teams that are both in the uh, in the top six in the in the coaches poll, as well as the TLN top six. So uh, it, look for it which to be, is really the real poll. I mean, the, the, we we see we see a lot of a lot of these teams play, and I think we're I'd like to consider us the experts on uh, just lacrosse in general. Uh, and interestingly enough, I don't know if anyone else noticed this, but uh, great great GB by uh, Costanzo here with uh, one minute to go, and can't quite find uh, Leoy there. Uh, can't save it and ball back to the Suggs.